Hello everyone, welcome. It is Saturday, March 16th, and I'm here to talk with you a little bit about what I've been doing this morning. I haven't been stitching yet. I have walked Coco, I have been editing a movie, a little video to put up for you guys, and then I decided to do a little FFO project that's been waiting. Many of you have said you're waiting to see it. <laughs> so I FFO'd my pandemic pillow. I want to show you. I'll back up so you can see the whole thing. Here it is. I got a really pretty sparkly trim on the top and the bottom. You can see that there. And I put a pillow form in here so that I didn't have to polyfill this whole thing. So I got a pillow form and that's kind of what determined the size of my pillow. But as it turned out, my fabric was the exact right size and I just put a backing on it. So here's the backing. It's velvet. It's a beautiful blue. And I put one of those um, pillow openings in the back so that I could slide it on. But let me tell you, that was a chore. That was the hardest part of this whole thing, is getting the pillow form in there. <laughs> I don't think I left it quite open enough. I probably put it a little too tight in the back. But anyway, this is what it looks like. I think the trim is a really pretty touch. It's got gold sparkly thread in it. You may not be able to see that on camera but it adds just a, a little bit of a sparkle to it, which is really, really nice. And I really like it, and I think it's a great size for lounging. I'm gonna put it on my bench, and I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to make some additional pillows to go on the bench on either side of it, because it doesn't fill up the whole bench. Once I figured out that I was gonna use a pillow form, it kind of limited the size I could make. I couldn't make it any longer because I thought I could put fabric on each end and maybe make it long enough to fill up the whole bench. But I don't have a pillow form. Couldn't find one that big. And I didn't want to use all that polyfill. So I just went with what I could find, the pillow form. And I think it's really, really pretty. And I love the blue. The backing with the, the blue thread I think looks really nice. And there you have it. So I'll insert a picture here of the bench with it sitting on there um, because that's where it's going to live. <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. But there you have it. There's my pandemic made into my pillow. Hope you liked it. And now I am going to start stitching. <laughs> I have my uh, bingo call for today, and my bingo call for today is, let me find it, my most recent start, and I mentioned that that would probably be my uh, June wordplay, and I do believe that that's what I'm going to, um, I think that's the most recent start that I haven't finished, so I will pull it out now, and I'll put 100 stitches in it, and then I'll decide what else I'm going to get done today. I had... Um, couple of things on my um, list of things I wanted to do, one of which was last video I mentioned I wanted to go through all my patterns that I've acquired and check what I have on my list of starts for the year and see if there's any changes I want to make. And so I've started pulling some patterns out today because I have them stored in different boxes and baskets depending on whether it's Christmas or Halloween or whatever and so I'm gonna pull everything out and relook at it and See if I need to make any changes and I think I'm gonna try to do that right after I finish my stitching today So I'm gonna go put my pillow on the bench grab a picture of it for you and then I will get busy stitching Hi everybody welcome back I am here to show you what I stitched on today for my bingo prompt. I had to get out my June wordplay today because I had to stitch on my most recent start. And this is my most recent start that I haven't already finished. <laughs> 
So today I did 175 stitches in here. I added two more of these little flowers there. And then I added in um, lemonade, the word lemonade. So there you have it, 175 stitches. Uh, so I'm working my way down this side over here because there's a word that's turned sideways that kind of cuts it in half right here. So I felt like it would be easier to just work my way down the Q-snap over this side. And then when I get back finished, I can do the, the word that's turned on its side, which is butterflies. And then I can do this side of the, of the thing. So that'll be great. I do know that I have at least five already stitched of this series. This will be number six. And so um, I need to look at it. Uh, with the idea of planning on uh, when to start the others so that I can get them finished um, as a series. I hadn't, I hadn't really looked at that, so I will do that. Anyway, that's my bingo stitching for the day, and now I'll put it away. I've been working on my bingo board. It's current. It's up to date, so that's great. And uh, now I can either do some more fully finishing or I can... Um, pick out something else I want to stitch on and just make some extra progress on it. So thanks for letting me share that with you. I hope to talk with you again soon. Happy stitching. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. This is Dina, and it is Sunday. It is March 17th, so happy St. Patrick's Day to you. I do have green in my shirt, so don't pinch. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to come and give you an update on the bit of stitching I've done so far this morning, and then I will tell you my plans for the rest of the day. But I hadn't been talking much about my other prompts in my challenges. As it turned out, all of my stitching that I was doing on those little small projects, the Stitches in the Heart and my Poinsettia Fairy and other things that I had been working on, uh, turned out that they I could use them all for one of my challenges. I went out and read it and looked at it and said, this is great. I've already stitched all of this in the time frame that the challenge is running. And so I put the challenge, um, said I was going, and then I just posted everything I'd been stitching for the last two or three days and uh, completed a whole challenge. It was wonderful. Then I got the latest challenge, and um, it's uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, I'll admit I'm not, I don't watch a lot of TV, so I'm not familiar with the show. I know what it is, but I haven't watched it. Um, but I am doing the challenge. So the very first um, one today was to stitch on a whip that's a first of some kind. And so I chose Hawk Run Hollow, Spring at Hawk Run Hollow because it is the first Hawk Run Hollow I've ever stitched. And so it is a first for me. So today, this was one of those um, challenges where you have to stitch a minimum of 300 stitches and a maximum of 400. And I actually put in 416 stitches this morning. So I stitched the other three rabbits in here. And then I started, I did this up here to show me and I went ahead and finished it over here as well to show me how far to stitch so that I can just do fill in now all the way back and forth so I'll just fill in that blue and then I can fill in their little eyes and um, I'll have that section done and then I can start working on the branches and the leaves in the tree but that was 416 stitches this morning and that's awesome so now I have to uh, back up a little bit and tell you my plans for the rest of the day. I need to stitch my bingo call for today, which is Haunted Mansion. So I need to pull it, put 100 stitches in it, and uh, go from there. And then I can go back to working on my challenge. And in my challenge, um, I have a prompt that says you're to stitch on a whip that has letters or words. And I've got two I could work on. I can either work on a sampler for all seasons or O oh, tomato. They, I'm both at the point of stitching words. 
So I'll just depend on whichever one I want to, to grab. And then number three is to stitch on a whip in which you have stitched either with a group in person or whether you uh, have stitched, you know, with friends like on a Zoom or something like that. And I have two, again, that I could do for that because I have actually stitched on my a sampler for all seasons at my stitching meetup on Saturdays. But I've also stitched Jingle Jolly Joy on Zoom. So I could pick either one of those. And then the final one is just to stitch on your favorite whip and tell what is your favorite episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer if you're a fan. Well, I'm not a fan because I haven't watched it, so I don't know if I would be a fan or not. But I don't have a favorite episode. I've not seen the show. So I don't have to tell anything because there's nothing to tell. But I get to pick my favorite whip. I have no idea which one that will wind up being. So those are great challenges. The difference is that the amount of stitches will be 300 or 400. So uh, that's a lot of stitching. I won't get all that done in one day. That'll be what I'll be working on for days to come. So <laughs> that, in addition to my bingo call, will be my stitching for the next few days. So that gives you an idea of what you will get to see. So I'm going to grab my Haunted Mansion now and see if I can't get my 100 stitches in it. Coco and my husband are at the park. He called a little while ago and said they'd be home in about two hours. They were going to take a nice long hike, and then he would, uh, they'd have to drive home. It's about a 30-minute drive to get back home. Um, but he want, it's going to rain this evening, this afternoon and evening, and so he wanted to get her out and about this morning, which was very nice of him. So I am going to swap out projects, and hopefully I'll have something else to share with you later on. In the meantime, happy stitching. Hello again, everyone. It is later on the 17th of March, and I am here to show you that I was able to stitch my bingo call today, which was Haunted Mansion. So let me show you uh, the 104 stitches that I put in today. I worked in this area across here. So I did this little section in this house here. I added in the little cat that's sitting there. I came across here and I stitched the rest of the cross stitch in here. I think the rest are beads. I came over here and I uh, did some fill in in these columns here and over here. And then I put one more color in the center of that. So. All across this row, I did stitching, and I stopped at 104 stitches uh, because that met the prompt, and I can go on now and pull out something else that I want to hit for the other challenge that I'm working on. So I'll put this away, and I'll change projects, and if I get it done today, I'll come back and share it with you. I hope you're having a good Sunday. I hope you're having a restful day, and I hope you're getting a stitch. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi, everybody. Good evening. This should be my last update of today, but I wanted to share with you what I've been stitching on this evening. Today is March 17th, and so today is the beginning of an event in the Magazine Monthly Challenge Group called Spring Into Action. And in that event, you are to pick your whip that's closest to a finish, and you are to stitch 500 stitches or five hours, whichever you prefer to count, and um, then post a picture of where you get to. Now, if you finish your piece before the 500 stitches, you post it, and then you can pick your next closest to a finish, and you can keep stitching until you hit 500 stitches or five hours. But... I knew I wouldn't have to worry about that because my piece that I selected is one of the ones closest to a finish, but right now I don't have anything that's that close to a finish. Everything that was close is finished. So I chose to work on O Tomato, which is by Hands on Design. I've been working on this a bit, but today I put 506 stitches in this for my event. 
So I started up here with my words and I did all of the words plus this flower, all these words plus this green vine that will be the same border that you have up there. <clears throat> 506 stitches. So I got a good section done um, and now I have this border to finish. I have another uh, row or two and then I'll be back to words again. So I've done the challenge. I qualified for the challenge, but I have a retreat coming up this weekend and I very well may take this with me to retreat because it's small, it's easy to stitch on. So we'll see if I get more work done on it in the near future. But I wanted to share that with you. So Carolyn and Robin, thank you for a great challenge. It got me to really put a lot of stitches in my O tomato today. I actually also double dipped today. In the Buffy challenge in the Daily 30 group, the prompt that I was meeting today was to stitch on something with words. And so I had to stitch 300 or 400 stitches. So I went ahead and did the 400, took a picture, posted it there, and kept stitching till I hit my 506 today. So I got another prompt met in my daily 30 challenge, which I'm very excited about. So really productive stitching today. I got my Hawker and Hollow stitching done for a prompt. I got my bingo prompt met. I got another prompt in my daily 30 group met with O Tomato. And then I also finished my uh, spring into action um, prompt as well, my challenge. So a good day, a good day of stitching. Um, it's been a, a beautiful day outside. My husband and I went out to uh, eat for barbecue today. It was such a pretty day. We almost sat outside to eat, but it was just a little bit cool, so we sat inside. But we talked about how we're looking forward to being able to sit outside next time we go. So I'm going to take a break now and go get dinner on the table, and we will eat and watch our friends, the winds, on their sailing adventure and uh, have a nice evening together. So I'm looking forward to uh, what next week might bring. In the meantime, happy stitching everybody. Hello everyone, welcome back. It is March 18th. It is Monday morning and I wanna share some stitching with you this morning, an FFO and a little bit about my plans for the day. Well, my stitching began with my bingo call, and my bingo call for today turned out to be a new start of my choice. I had a lot to choose from. I looked at several of my WIPGO starts that I had planned for the year, but a lot of them are fall or Halloween, and I thought, well, unless they're called, I'd rather not stitch them right now. I really wanna stitch something spring, summer, Easter. I want to stitch something bright. And so it hit me. I had just put in the mail an Easter card to my sister Stephanie that I cross-stitched for her last year and have been holding it. And it was this one, this little bunny rabbit right here. And the card comes with it. So, I mean, that's exactly what it looked like. And I wrote her an Easter message on the inside. And I hope she will get it in the next day or two. So I decided that I might like to stitch another card maybe for somebody else. So this is the little rabbit that I'm gonna do next. I'm saving this bigger one for maybe another year, but since this one's so close to Easter, I thought I might could get this one finished in time. And I got started on him. So I needed 100 stitches, as you know, for my bingo. And what I got was 180 because I did the bright red color on his little jumper. And now this is where his little arm will go. And then there's a darker red in the back with his little bunny tail. Um, so I got quite a bit done. And I have decided to take this with me on retreat. So um, I will hopefully get some stitches in it while uh, at retreat this weekend.
So then I spent a little time doing an FFO. I took this project with me recently to two fabric stores looking for the perfect fabric because my plan was to make it into a pillow. I did, this is a series, this is a, a seasonal series, and I did autumn before. It's a drawn thread pattern, and I made autumn into a beautiful pillow to put on my mantle. And my plan was to stitch winter, spring, and summer, and make them each a pillow so I could just swap them out on my, on my mantle. I could not find the fabric that I wanted at either fabric store. I just haven't been able to find it. And I don't want to order online because you can't see anything. You can't see the real color. And I don't want to waste a lot of money ordering fabric and then have it get here and it not match. So while I was at Hobby Lobby looking at fabrics, because I went to Joann's and Hobby Lobby, I saw a picture frame that I thought this would fit in pretty well. And the picture frame, I felt like complimented it because it's very blingy. So I went ahead and just framed it for now. I may change it later, but this is what it looks like now. Now you can't see all the sparkle, but it's got all these beautiful Swarovski crystals on it. So it, it really sparkles when you look at it. And in this piece, it's hard for you to see because you can see the white snowflakes, but there are silver, tiny, tiny little beads in there as well that are quite sparkly. And so when you put this frame with those little silvery beads in there, I think it looks lovely. Sorry for the glare. It's just a photo frame, so it's not non-glare, you know, glass. But this is my winter arbor by the drawn thread. I've had it stitched for a long time and I just haven't had a chance to look for fabric and I'm not finding what I want. But I think this looks fine for now. It'll do and I'll be able to put it out this coming winter. And in the meantime, I'll keep my eyes peeled for fabric because I think the pillow is my preferred finish but this will certainly allow me to put it out and enjoy it instead of it being in my box waiting for me to do something with it. So there's my FFO today. I got that done and it's just a, one of those photo frames. So there you have it. So I'll put that away. So let's talk a little bit about plans for the rest of the day. Um, I have a couple of things to do. I have some stitching I want to do for my challenge with the Daily 30 group. It's a big challenge because it requires a minimum of 300, a maximum of 400 stitches to meet the prompt. And I have two prompts left in that thing. And it goes for two weeks, but I'm going to be in a retreat this weekend. And so I'd really like to get those two prompts met before I leave town. So that's kind of a goal I've set for myself. And I have decided that for the one uh, challenge that says stitch on something you've stitched with other people, I'm gonna do Jingle Jolly Joy because I have used it on Zoom calls and it is on my year of whips and I have a lot of stitching left to do on it. So I'm gonna do that. And then the next one is for my favorite whip. And I am gonna, I've, I've told you this before, all my whips are my favorites. I, I don't have one that I love more than any other. It looks like I do sometimes because when I get close to a finish, I let everything else slide and I work on the whip that's about to be finished. And that's kind of how I'm starting to feel with a sampler for all seasons. So I think I'm gonna pull that one out to fill the slot right now of my favorite whip. And I'll put the 300 to 400 stitches in it as soon as I can, either today or tomorrow. Well, maybe tomorrow, because today I'm actually going to the movies with friends from my Sunday school class at church. And I don't know how many of us are going, but I know that there's a handful, if not more. And we're going to meet there at 3.30. I think the movie starts at 3.50. And uh, we'll get our tickets and get our seats together. 
Um, and then we'll watch the movie. And it, it's roughly a two hour movie. So about 5.30 or so, you know, we'll be through. I don't anticipate anything after that other than we'll chat a minute before we leave. Uh, but I have already planned out my dinner uh, to cook uh, as soon as I get home, something that's going to be easy to cook. And then um, I have a Zoom call tonight at 8 o'clock. And so I'll get to stitch again tonight at least at 8 o'clock. And that'll be great. Um, tomorrow, I have a busy morning. I get to talk to my sister Stephanie early because I'll be out of town Friday. We normally talk on Fridays. So we're talking in the morning. Um, and Coco goes to the groomer tomorrow. And my husband has been uh, asked to possibly help out a friend on an errand. And so he may or may not be available to pick Coco up in the afternoon. So I'm on standby for that. So I have to stay kind of close, uh, which is fine with me. I'll be here stitching. <laughs> so that'll be good. So that's kind of the next two days in my life. A little bit of activity, a little fun. I think we're going to be seeing angels unaware or I have something about angels. Uh, I've heard really good things about it and um, I'm looking forward to seeing it with the ladies. So that'll be, that'll be good. Well, I um, am glad that I finished my bingo stitching early. This is where I'm at in my bingo. Um, we have to get all the ones that are shaded green to hit a bingo. So I obviously have one, two, three, four, five more to get. <laughs> it may be typical for me. Usually it's the last call that he gives me the bingo. I don't know why I can't ever put my numbers in the right order <laughs> to do better because I move them every time trying to get the right combination. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's really just to help us get stitches into everything. Um, so I have on my bingo board still to stitch on Stitcher's Days of Christmas, 13th Colony Part 3, Miss Christmas Eve, which isn't a bingo call, but it's still open, a sampler for all seasons, my December quilt, and Hawk Run Hollow, and Let Love Rain. Um, five of those are bingo quality and the others are just fill in the blanks you know they're they're not counting for anything but they still have to all be done if I want to black out my board which I want to do so I've been trying not to pull forward any of these whips that are going to be called so I can do all my stitching on them when they're called in the past month I would pull a whip forward to meet a prompt in another group stitch it and the next day it would be called for bingo and I'd have to stitch on it again. <laughs> it was like, I just put 300 stitches in this and now I got to put another hundred. So I'm trying to avoid that, but getting closer to the end of the month, that's going to be hard to do because I've stitched on other things. And so I really need to put some time and stitches in what's on the board. So I'll just have to risk it. <laughs> I'll just have to stitch on it again. Um, so today, uh, I'm going to work on those two prompts for, um, or at least one of them, uh, for the Daily 30 group. And since Jingle Jolly Joy has already been called on my board, um, I feel pretty confident to start on that one and do it first because maybe they'll call a sampler for all seasons tomorrow and I can go ahead and get that done. <laughs> That would be awesome because I could do the first hundred stitches and go ahead and post it and then finish up what I need for my daily 30 group. Um, and I would only have to pull it out one time. We'll see. I've also been trying to determine what I want to take with me on the retreat this weekend. So the first one that I have decided is this little card. And of course, the second one that was already decided ahead of time is the new start that I'm doing with my friends that I went to the finishing weekend with. And that is the Christmas parade. And I have it ready to go and I have it kitted up. So I'll remind you of what that looks like 
Um, it's pretty recent, so you probably remember. But this is what the pattern looks like. Christmas Parade. And I am going to be stitching it on this beautiful fabric from uh, Be Stitch Me called Frost. It's a 32 count Lugana. And I think it's going to look great on there. So it's I'm going to have some of it left over because the piece long lengthwise this way um it will only i'll only have like an inch and a half margin when i'm done but the thing is only about four and a half inches wide so you know i'll have probably half of this piece left over lengthwise when i get through with it so this is ready. All the threads are pulled and in here in my thread box. Um, so I'm ready to go, ready to get it started. And I've already marked on my working copy how far to measure over and down for my starting point. I am going to do a top left start. That's my preference, and I've figured it out in a way to do that. So I think that's awesome. So that's enough chit-chat. <laughs> But I do hope that you enjoyed my new start and my FFO, and um, and I hope that you're okay hearing a little bit about plans and what's coming up in the next day or so. And for now, I'm going to say uh, enjoy your stitching, and I'll talk to you hopefully either this evening with some progress or in the morning with some. So until we speak again, happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. Today is March 19th. It's Tuesday, and I have a little bit of stitching to share with you. First of all, I had a busy morning. <laughs> I wound up going to a Bible's, a ladies' Bible study at church and then having lunch with my husband before I could get home and get settled in to stitch. And, of course, we had to get up early this morning and take Coco to the groomer. So I just was running all morning long. And I got home after lunch and got busy working on my bingo call for the day, which is Miss Christmas Eve. For bingo, I have to do 100 stitches. That's my personal goal that I've set for each of my bingo calls. And today I did 101 stitches. That's all I managed because I had such a you know, busy morning. But let me show you. Um, what I was able to do is I came over here with this dark green, which is 905, and all 101 stitches are in this section right here. So I've almost got it even all the way across so that I can keep working my way down um, in the dress. And I'm very, very happy. I don't know if you can see um, all the color variation in this fabric. I think you can there. Um, but I love this linen. I bought it a couple of years ago from Julie at Reflections Framing and Stitching uh, in Nebraska. She has a, a brick and mortar LNS. And the name of this fabric is Cecil. And mine is, I believe it's a 28 count or 32 count. I'm thinking, I can't tell. I've got it written down if you really need to know, but um, I'm loving it. I think it's going to make her big and beautiful, and I really like it on that fabric. So once I finished stitching for my bingo, I decided to look around and see what I hadn't touched in a little while on my whips. Uh, I finished my um, challenge in my... Um, Daily 30 group, and I finished the pop-up challenge in the monthly magazine where you stitch 500 stitches on a whip closest to a finish. I did that already. So I thought, well, I get to just stitch anything I want today, and I hadn't stitched on this in a little while, so I pulled out my By the Bay, and I put in 212 stitches right at the bottom. I'm working my way across for that third section, and so, I just did those colors through that little scrubby bush and um, 
did two colors of the um, grass and then the bushes one color. So I've, I've done three colors today and decided that I would stop because it was time to cook supper. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'll show you the whole thing. Once again, I just love it, it's so pretty. Um, so, that is the stitching so far today. Now, it is only about six o'clock. I've just finished supper. Um, my husband is taking Coco to the park. He is putting his backpack on, loaded down with weight like he would be if he were hiking. And he's taking her to the park so that they can hike the hills in the park through the woods like he would be doing, trying to prepare for his next trip to the AT Trail this summer. So um, he's trying to, to wear that backpack every time he takes her for a walk now just to condition himself uh, to carry the weight. So, I have planning to share with you. I did have a thought this week that in trying to decide what to take with me to stitch on at retreat this weekend, I was trying to figure out, other than the retreat start that several of us have agreed to do together, which is the Christmas parade, what did I want to do? So, earlier this week, I started a new little project, a tiny little Easter card uh, that I bought in a kit a couple of years ago, and I stitched one, and I mentioned I mailed it to my sister. She hasn't gotten it yet. Um, but, I would like to stitch another one. I think they're really precious, and so I started it so I could take it with me to retreat because it's a nice, small project and I can, can do that. But it prompted an idea for me because that was a project bag I had that I had stitched one of three items out of that pattern and I wanted to do the others and I just put it away in my to be started someday pile over there. I have a basket once I start one of the things I tend to put, if there's something else in that series that I want to stitch, I put it in a basket over there together. So. The idea being that when I need a new start, I can grab it because it's kitted, okay? So today, I just, out of curiosity, thought I would like to check in that basket. I'd like to see what kind of things I have over there that I may have forgotten about and not kept, not put in my plans. And I, you know, I'm not going to finish those series if I don't work on them. So today, I actually opened every project bag and looked in it and decided to write it down on a list of potential starts. Now, these are not my necessarily my 40 starts I had planned, but some of them could have been. So I did cross-reference that, and I'll tell you what I found out about it. But as it turns out, I have approximately 25 projects over there that are either the second of a series, third, fourth, or fifth of a series kind of thing. And I thought I would just kind of tell you about it a little bit. One you know about, I've been stitching little ornaments for my friend that lives in Florida, and I wanted to do all of the coastal ornament series, the all three ornaments and the little storage box as a gift for my friend. I've done two of the ornaments. So the third ornament and the box itself are sitting over there to start. I do have that third ornament in my plan for my 40 starts sometime this year, but I don't have the box anywhere. It's not on a plan anywhere. So that is an unplanned project that needs to be put into a plan at some point. Um, and then um, back early, early, this year, or maybe late last, late last year, maybe, um, I started working on the hands-on design polar plunge series, and I got two done, and I hadn't made plans for the rest of them. 
you know, I didn't have them anywhere written down of when I was to start them. None of them made it on my WIPGO board and none of them have made it on my bingo board yet. I think I just, they were out of sight, out of mind. So I've written them down on my list. There are four of those. The Well Hello There, Penguin the Pear, The Puffin Party, and N is for Norwal. <clears throat> I still have to stitch those four. So they're now on my list. I mentioned a while back that I wanted to do all four seasons of, that Jess Nan has done, has designed, that are the companion pieces to my Autumn in the Country. I do have all the patterns, all three patterns now. Um, and so I have winter, spring, and summer that I need to do in that series. So I put that on the list so I wouldn't forget it. I won't get, by any means, I will not get all this stitched this year. I'm not planning that. I'm just trying to capture what my series are that I have necessarily not remembered as well as I would like to. And then I think you may recall I stitched a birthday stitch that is just a happy birthday kind of sentiments that I want to put on my mantle during the month of August when it's my husband, son, and dog's birthdays <laughs> in the month of August. And so the second one that I need to stitch is the hands-on design happy birthday. And it's the one that goes in the little edge of the shelf um, that um, Chantel 141 created. I do have that um, to be finished. I need to paint it, but I have the paint and I have the little thing. So I just need to put that in my to-do list. Um, and I, I have that one ready to start and um, it's fully kitted. I didn't have floss with it this morning when I pulled it out. So I remedied that and now all the floss is there. And I'm seriously considering taking it with me on retreat, possibly. So it's a, it's a contender. And then you may recall on one of my cruises, um, I started the series uh, by Lila Studio of Christmas in Blue. It's the sweaters, the Christmas sweaters. And so I've only done one of the four. I've got three more I can do and it's fully kitted. So that's what I want to put on my list to look at. Over the last couple of years too, I've been working on the um, Brenda Gervais word plays. And I just wondered this morning, I'm working on June. How many have I done? <laughs> you know, I don't remember. As it turns out, I have <clears throat> six left to do. My June will be halfway. So I have August, September, October, November, December, and January to do. Um, so I don't know if I want to try to do one a month or what I might want to do with that, but I would like to get that done. Um, I've just been working along, you know, one or two a year, I guess, and I, I would like to step that up. And then I had mentioned when I finished Royal Games 1 that I didn't want it to be too long before I started Royal Games 2. So I put that on the list so I wouldn't forget it. And if you've been watching me a while, you know full coverage is not my thing. However, my son gifted me the Vintage Village Ornament Kit that has six beautiful Christmas ornaments that are full coverage. And I have done two of them. So I didn't start another one for this year and they're looking at me over there and I need to start one. So I put that on the list because I have four left to do and I've been doing only one a year. So, and this year I didn't even put one on my schedule. So I need to get over it. <laughs> I would like to have those ornaments stitched. And it, I know it's going to take me a while to do them because I'm very slow with full coverage. So um, I need to pick that back up. My friend Juliana has that same kit and she's thinking about starting hers. So maybe she and I could work out a start along. We don't stitch together as far as we don't want to wait on each other. We stitch differently, but we might could start one together. I'll have to talk to her about that. And then the last thing on my list 
is my stitch box. Last year I did one section of that pattern and it's beautiful. It was over one and it was a challenge. Um, it's a Jeanette Douglas, so you know it's a challenge. <laughs> but I have four sections I think left to do that I haven't touched. So I put that on the list. One of those is on my whip go board, one section. I can pick whichever one I want, but it's on my whip go board. So thinking about all this and talking about it, I wanted to just say that I have an idea. I pulled out my planning notes from the first of the year when I came up with my 40 starts and where they were gonna fall. I have how many are in whip go, I have how many are gonna be uh, in my AB Singo this year, uh, which one I had set aside to put on that board. I have May Mondays assigned, um, that sort of thing. Well, I went back through it today. And interestingly enough, I had also put on each month one of my whips I wanted to focus on for a finish. And as it turns out, I have already finished the ones I put on the list all the way through June. So it needed to be adjusted anyway. And so I've been looking at it today and I actually did adjust it some. I took some of the things off of my list that I just told you about and I substituted some of them for my planned starts. They're not on whip go, I checked, but they were on my little 40 planned starts on what I was gonna do. For instance, on May Monday, I was going to start um, the first tree by, that Liz Matthews has in her collection of the 12 days of Christmas. I don't have all of those yet. She hasn't released all of them yet, but I was gonna start the first one. I've changed my mind about that. I want to finish some of these series before I start another one. I already am doing the 12 Berries of Christmas um, by Erica Michaels, one a month for this year. So um, I can hold off on that one. So instead, I put one of my hands-on design um, Polar Plunge instead and I've put Well Hello there to be a start for one of my main Mondays. I had a Christmas one in there, so I just substituted that one and got it on there. So I've been doing a little bit of that today, and the other thing I was thinking about doing is my bingo game for next month. I want it to be a little different because here's what I've been doing to myself. I've mentioned this before that I've been waiting until a bingo call is called to stitch on that piece to hit my cross sticks with it. So even though bingo only needs 100 stitches, if the acrostic needs more, I just keep stitching until I hit it. But what it's causing me to do is wait to hit that acrostic. And as with this bingo game, we play till the 25th of the month. And so I could finish those acrostics before then possibly if I didn't have to wait on it. And if I go ahead and pull it forward and stitch on it, and then it gets caught the next day on bingo, which has happened to me a couple of times, you know, then I feel a little bit like, I just did that. I could have counted yesterday's stitches had I known it. You know, I could have waited a day. So I'm thinking that rather than do that, set myself up that way, I'm going to change completely how I address my slots on my bingo board. So I'm going to play with that tonight. And when I get it all ironed out, I'll share that with you. But I just thought it might you might find it interesting. I don't know if you have started series in the past that you haven't finished. But I would encourage you to go through what you have. Um, look and see how many series have you started that you still have a part of it to stitch. And would you like to bring it forward and maybe make it a priority for this year and maybe start one or two or, you know, however many you can. Um, so that you push your series closer to a, a completion and um, you might 
you know, free up a spot <laughs> in your to be stitched soon basket like I'm trying to do. Anyway, it was a fun exercise today. It, it taught me a lot. Um, I think I was really excited about starting all of those series and never really thought past the first one and getting it on the schedule to get them started. But I just never went the next step and said, now, when am I going to do the next one? When am I going to do the next one? Other than my, my uh, word plays. And I did keep putting those on my whip go board and my bingo board till I got, I'm on now the sixth one. So I'm going to try to do better with that and get some of these little series finished up. Um, because I would like to do that. Um, and, and several of them are small. And I don't have a lot of smalls. Every time I start a small, I finish it. So um, I think maybe if I started the second one of a lot of these series to have a group of smalls that I could stitch on and take with me when I travel or go to the library, things like that, that would be helpful. So I'm going to work on it, and I'll keep you posted as I go. Thanks for letting me share my planning session with you. I know that was a lot of talking and not a lot of eye candy, but um, hopefully you may have gotten sparked an idea from that. And if you have some recommendations for me that you think might help me in the process, let me know. Let me hear from you. In the meantime, happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is March 21st. It is Thursday and I have been stitching for the last two days on a project. My bingo call in my private bingo group was for a sampler for all seasons yesterday and I did my 100 stitches. I did about 109, took a picture, posted it and decided, well, I'm just going to keep stitching a little while. I've met my prompt for the day, and this isn't on anything else that I haven't already used it for, and so I'll just stitch on it until I'm ready to put it away, and then I'll decide what else I want to work on. So I stitched on it the rest of the day, and when I went to bed last night, I had just about 300 or so stitches left to do, but it was late. It was after 11, and I, I had an early morning today. So after my first appointment this morning, I came home, and I stitched again. And I finished her. So this is my sampler for all seasons. It's winter, spring, and then summer, and then fall. And the block that I finished up this morning was fall. And I will tell you this, when I finished that squirrel, I was jumping for joy because I ran out of that color right at the end of the squirrel. And when I finished the middle of the house and the tree, those are the same colors, I have like one strand left of that color. So there were two colors in this pack that was kitted in the kit that I barely had enough, and I am a thread miser, so I'm not sure that others haven't run out of those two. They may have, but anyway, I'm tickled to death that I didn't. I was thrilled to be able to finish it without having to stop and reorder anything and worry about dot lots, but I love this sampler. I think it's beautiful. I like the sentiment in it. And I really enjoyed having all four seasons stitching each block so differently. Each house is different. So I don't like stitching the same thing twice. <laughs> so, so I really like this. This really spoke to me. So I um, did it on the kitted fabric, which was um, Ada, 18 count Ada. And it's, um, I'm sorry, 16 count Ada because it's equivalent to a 32 linen. Uh, and it's in Steinbeck, and it's a fox and rabbit uh, fabric. So, I believe it's fox and rabbit. Hold on. Yeah, it's needle and flax. So, it's a needle and flax fabric. I'm sorry. Um, but the color is Steinbeck. And I love it. I think it's gorgeous. So, I have a retreat this weekend. 
I'm gonna take this with me for the table, uh, the brag table. And I'm so tickled because no one will have seen it yet. <laughs> so that'll be awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, let you get right back to what you were doing. I am about to walk out the door and meet a friend for lunch and then I'll be back. I get to talk to my sister today. We're talking um, today because I'm leaving town tomorrow and um, I'm looking forward to, to catching up with her. So I have a great afternoon planned and hopefully even more stitching. So in the meantime, until we talk again, happy stitching everybody. Hi everybody, welcome back. I did get a chance to finish stitching for my private bingo prompt, which was my December quilt today. I stitched 100 stitches and I posted it and then I kept stitching. <laughs> I got to talk to my sister Stephanie today and I was just chatting with her as I was uh, stitching there and enjoying our conversation so much and it was fill in. I had stitched uh, one color in the several uh, little sections and then that had created uh, an area that I could just fill in with white and so that's what I did. So I'll remind you what the December quilt looks like and I'm actually working. I started right around the center of the quilt here and so I've been working in that little section right there and on the quilt itself. So today I got a lot done. I put in 408 stitches. So I came over here with this red color, the little single stitches here all the way across, did these leaves in it. And then when I finished doing those little red colors across here, it meant I had stitched everything but the white in this section between those lines of ecru there. So I got my white out and I just filled in while I was talking on the phone. So there you have it. There's my December quilt so far. And I think it's very pretty. I like the, the picture. So the good news is, in addition to my private bingo game, I had used December quilt in my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic. And I'm using it for the first letter on get your ticket and it's for the G, and I'm letting it stand for gift because this is going to be a gift for my friend Cheryl. So I am excited to tell you that that leaves me only two letters in my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic. That's C, which I'm using my Stitcher's Days of Christmas for, and K, which I intend to use Teresa Kogut's Let Love Rain for that. Then I have, um, in my magazine monthly challenge group, I have one letter remaining, it is an O, and I'm using it for one motif in my Stitcher's Days of Christmas. So when I stitch it, I'll hit both of those. And the only letter I have remaining in my daily 30 acrostic, which is the one that requires the 300 stitches, is for R. And since I'm already using the Let Love Rain in one acrostic, I'm using Let Love Rain for my R. So when I get that 300 stitches, I'll be set. I will have all my acrostics met with those two pieces. Now, both of those pieces are on my bingo board to be called, which means they'll be called sometime between now and the 25th. So I'm getting there. <laughs> I am going to a retreat in the morning, so I'll get the call tonight, and if it's one I can take with me, I'll take it with me to stitch at the retreat. Um, if it's not one that's portable, I'll have to leave it here till I get through with the retreat, and then I'll be in catch-up mode again. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, I have enjoyed my stitching and my conversations uh, today. And uh, the next thing I think I'm going to work on, though, is my O tomato. I think that would be easy to do today. And I'm just, uh, my husband's off for a run. And then we're going to eat supper when he gets home. So I think I'm going to grab O tomato and just do some easy stitching on it while I'm waiting on him to get home. And if I have a chance to share that with you, I will. 
I don't know how much filming I'll get to do at the retreat. You know, I'm always conscious of the fact that everybody there isn't a floss tuber, and I don't like to take video of people without their permission and put it on my channel. So there's too many people there to go around and ask every one of them how they feel about it. So I tend to not film when I'm at retreats, and um, then I'll film later, maybe a recap or something. But <clears throat> I'll keep you posted uh, as much as I can, and I'll uh, catch you up, if nothing else, as soon as I get back. So in the meantime, happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is Dina. It is later on the 21st of March, and I am here to let you know my last little bit of stitching I accomplished this evening. My husband and I did have a lovely dinner together, and then we watched Survivor. And it was kind of a sad uh, episode. Poor guy. Knew it was coming. <laughs> anyway, um, then I came back up here, and I did a little more stitching. So between waiting on my husband to finish his run and shower and get ready for dinner, and then after Survivor, after watching um, Survivor on um I think it's prime time or something where we see it. Um, I came back up here to finish my stitching because I wanted to get the next section done on my O tomato. I've set a personal goal to try to finish this next in my group of current whips and so I'm gonna give it a lot of extra time the rest of this month just to kind of push it along. And so today I put in an additional 234 stitches in here and what I did was finish this little band across here that has the vine with the little flowers on it and then I finished the Smyrna cross band here and the straight stitch band and then underneath it was just a band of pairs of cross stitches but that has finished the whole section between the words. So today I finished this row across here. So this is where I'm at. So the next grouping that I do will be these words. Um, and then I'll have these images to do and then this group of words and then this is the bottom. Of it there so I am here and now that I've gotten into it it's when I work on it it goes um, fairly quickly so I'm hoping that I can put enough time into it that I could finish it next month anyway I'm hoping that I can do that so um, that's the stitching for today that's all the stitching for today anyway until I get to speak with you next time, happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> and it is morning. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> We've had quite an adventure this morning trying to film this. I have broke my microphone stand. Um, had to take my phone apart to get it to fit in the broken stand. But we're going to get this done. <laughs> Well, we're going to try. <laughs> yeah, we're, let's, yeah, I better correct that. We're here to remind you that Donna is putting this pattern up for adoption. The Pins and Needles Wedding Sampler. And 25 of you responded to the video that we talked about this and said you were interested in stitching it. And this morning we did the random uh, generator and the winner was... Number seven, which was Reader1869. Congratulations, and in a second, congratulations for your 36th anniversary coming up. Yeah, I was telling Donna when I was reading the comments, um, in, this, in her comments, she wrote that she wanted to stitch this because their 36th wedding anniversary would be this year, and she would like to stitch it for their anniversary. And Donna didn't even know that, and so when she hit the random number 
generator this morning and it came up number seven and I had I saw who it was I had written in parentheses 36th wedding anniversary so I could tell her about it and we got really tickled because we said it was just meant to be so congratulations we're mm -hmm. really excited for you I'll try to remember to put a comment back on your comment since it's been a few episodes but um, if you will put your um, mailing address in an email to me. My email will be in the description box below, and then uh, we can put this in the mail to you. So, happy for you. Happy stitching.